Hello, wishing you a happy Easter from Jean of LitterarilyMyWay.com. Today, I'm going to share with you some baskets that I made. Well, growing up, I didn't often make baskets for my children. Actually, I don't think I ever did. I'm not even sure I ever bought one. My mother did and their godmother did. Um, but this week, all of their grown, um, I decided to make Easter baskets. So I made three, one for my son, one for his girlfriend, and one for my daughter. And in my fashion, you know, I always like to find a book that either inspires me or an activity that inspires a book. So what I did is I did go online and I found the book that I wanted to use. And it's called My Easter Basket and the True Story of Easter. And in this book, it kind of traveled, talks about the resurrection of Christ, and it talks about the colors and what the colors mean. Let me first share you with you my baskets. This is my son's basket, and inside, you'll see a book, his favorite candy, nerds, another favorite snack of his, Cheetos. Um, he loves Peeps, and then there are some t-shirts in it that uh, my husband found when we were on a trip in Florida. This is his girlfriend's, and hers has um, a combination of things. She also has some cheeses. Her fa favorite candy is the Kit Kat, where his was um, nerds. She likes Kit Kats, and um, she likes Milky Ways and Twix. And then there's a little notebook, a Sudoku, um, puzzle book for just some entertainment and some uh, highlighters. She's also a student and her favorite land animal is the elephant. And then there's a cross in there. Um, and there's also a serenity bracelet. Um, God grant me serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and wisdom to know the difference. So a bracelet. And then the cross is, um, I do not have my glasses on, uh, but it says, Por que de tal manera amó Dios al mundo que ha dado a su hijo? In other words, uh, excuse me, God gave his only son. So that's what I made for her. For my daughter, who loves monkeys, her favorite candy is those little mini M&Ms. And then she also got some cheese it. She loves Rugrats, so she got a Rugrats shirt. Um, Trey's, uh, well, my son's girlfriend, she got shirts as well. Got some more peeps, goldfish, a little book. She loves monkeys. And then I found uh, some more chocolate for her as well. And then she has something for, for, the, um, for some grooming things. Just something just so she can, some spa things so she can treat herself. So these are the three baskets that I made. And I um, hope you enjoy those. Now each one, as you can see, they're very colorful from the outside to the end. My daughter's has her favorite colors. Um, and each one I did just a little differently. Uh, so I want to talk with you about the significance of Easter colors. And... Once I read, uh, had the book, read, read the book actually, I can't get it now, so I don't have a copy of it. On my blog, there'll be um, story time with, uh, I think it's Anna Marie, and she'll be reading the book and I'll be sharing that. Uh, but I also did a lot of research on the different colors. I've always loved color theory and colors, whether it comes down to painting my classroom blue because blue is calming, although people think yellow is the happy and the joy when it comes to painting walls and children. It actually helps agitate kids or get them irritated and too anxious. And so those colors always meant a lot to me. And although the colors that, when I talk about the colors here, is different than when you're painting your walls and the effects you want. I'm talking about the significance of Easter color. And I do have a cheat sheet. I will have this as part of my blog. When it comes to red, First thing, of course, you think about is associated, associated with the blood that Jesus Christ shed. Red is a symbol of blood, love, fire, suffering, and the sacrifice of goodness and humanity. It represents the passion of Christ. Orange is a color that represents hope. 
it's associated with the new dawn and a new day, a new season. Yellow is related to the brightness of the sun, the sunshine. It's a color that represents pure joy and happiness. Green represents the hope of Christ's renewal, rebirth, resurrection, the promise of eternal life and hope. It is the color of growth. It also signifies the Holy Ghost. Blue is the color of the heavens and of the sky. It represents water. It suggests peace and harmony. Remember I said earlier that's the color I painted my classrooms and allowed to paint. Royal blue, opposed from blue, royal blue symbolizes the birth of Jesus. And the Protestant churches use it to distinguish Advent from Lent. Blue also signifies the beginning of a new creation. Purple and violet well, the color purple is indicative of power and royalty. Think about the kings. And even in, in um, Catholic priests, a lot of times purple is one of the colors that they have within any part of their garb. Purple is said to bring wealth. It represents penance, humility, remembrance, melancholy, and spiritual wealth. Violet is also the symbol for pain, suffering, and sorrow. It also symbolizes inward reflection and something special. Brown signifies the darkness and the sadness. Think about once Jesus was crucified where they put him inside the tomb, the brownness of the tomb. Black is a symbol of mourning and related to fasting mercy, and penance. Some say that it also symbolizes darkness. White, although not considered a color by many, signifies purity, grace, innocence, light, joy, triumph, and glory. Pink, the East, this Easter color signifies purity, excuse me, represents uh, bountiful joy, jubilance of hope and love. It indicates a fresh beginning, a new start. The color rose signifies joy and jubilation. Gray is the color of ashes and therefore a biblical symbol of mourning and, rep and repentance. It is sometimes used on Ash Wednesday, during Lent, or on special days of fasting and prayer. The color silver symbolizes brightness and purity. And last but not least is gold, something that is precious and valuable. It represents the glory and triumph, specifically Jesus' resurrection and triumph over death. The color is indicative of the riches of our inheritance in Christ and his kingdom, our internal home. Again, these are significances of Easter colors. Keep in mind that, yes, Easter is one day, and I know that you that there's Good Friday and Ash Wednesday, and it's that weekend of the three days, but the colors can be taught all throughout the year and symbolized all throughout the year. And that's what's great about that little book. It shares a story and inspired me to think about the colors. Whether I walk outside, I have pink bushes and red bushes and there were yellow daffodils. They're gone now, but they were out there. And looking at the colors, think about a scavenger hunt. A scavenger hunt, and like I said, right now, we're, um, I know that I'm at home. I'm sheltered at home. Some people are quarantined. But here's an opportunity that on your next walk or your next drive, look at all the wonders. God's wonders, and think about those colors of Easter. It's not just a one-day activity. It's something we remember forever. Again, this is Jean from Literarily My Way. And happy Easter, happy reading, and happy respect and admiration of color.